uh, I recommend beginning seated on something. We spend so much time in, uh, as a modern human being sitting in chairs, so to sit completely flat on the floor can make a rounded back. So I'm sitting on a block with my legs crossed, my hands rested on my thighs. As you sit, think of moving the back of your spine in from a few different points especially. So from your tailbone, move in and up there. Um, right for like a lady where the bra line would be and for a gentleman, like right where a lady's bra line would be, move in there. That's one of my favorite things that Leslie says, it's pretty funny. And then the l other point is uh, just at the bottom of your neck, we'll tend to slouch and roll the shoulders forward there. So move in there. Now as you move all these points in your spine, try not to let the front body push forward. So think of the front body being magnetized in and up. And now watch your breath. Slow down your breath. So if you'd like to meditate longer, you could pause the video and practice watching the breath. Otherwise, come up to stand and put your hand at the wall. Also, you're going to want to have the block. So if you don't have a block already, I recommend going wherever blocks are sold, um, getting one, because you'll use them for this while you watch my videos. But I've taken the block way up high so I can feel my groins up against the block and my upper inner thigh. Then I put my hand at the wall, the heel of the hand lines up with the shoulder. I'm showing you how I'm turning my arm and also how I'm lengthening the neck. So I want you to turn your tricep forward. As you turn your tricep forward, you'll have a little bend in your elbow. You'll roll the top of the shoulder back, the shoulder head back. Then think of lengthening right where I pointed at the back of the neck out past your fingernails and stretch the hand as open as you can into the wall, make the biggest handprint. Keep stretching and now start to lift the tricep muscle up towards the bone without engaging your upper trap. That's that muscle back there at the back of your neck, at the bottom. So keep the collarbone broad, broaden from the collarbone, broaden at the back of the neck, and you have a plexus of nerves back there. It's called the brachial plexus, right at the base of your neck. Think of all those nerves lengthening past your fingertips. Then release the arm and change sides. Put your other hand at the wall. And as you put your hand at the wall, place the heel of the hand in line with the shoulder. Put a little bend in the elbow to start so you can rotate your upper arm. So turn the tricep forward and roll the shoulder head right where I'm pointing. Turn the tricep, roll the shoulder head back and lengthen through the back of the neck out past your fingers. In addition to lengthening the back of the neck, think of the collarbone getting broad. So from the center of your chest, lengthen past the tip of your shoulder and start to lengthen all that energy out through the fingertips. Feel like the nerves could grow longer through the fingertips. Then as you turn the tricep forward, start to lift the tricep muscle up towards the bone without gripping your upper trap. So you're trying to teach that muscle to engage the tricep without using the upper trap. The thighs stay even across the block and you're hugging in without hardening the groins. All right, now release that, move the block, come back onto your mat, and turn your hands around. Turn your forefingers to point back, thumbs to point out on your hands and your knees. As you hold there, bend both of the elbows slightly, and we're gonna do some um, stretching of the wrists. So as you stretch all of your fingers and open up your handprint, think of lifting up out of your wrist and put a little bend in the elbow. Now see if you can rotate your elbows out. You won't really be able to see in the video, but I'm just turning the elbows out and slowly in. See if you can rotate in and out. Then release the hands and set the right forearm down on the floor and put your right knee into the back of your arm. So start close to the elbow and you're just gonna lean into your elbow and gently massage, roll forward and back, roll side to side and roll in circles, massaging the forearm out. So this is really good for climbers. Somebody asked me about climbers, what should you do? This is a great massage technique to do so you can loosen up your forearms. Then scoot the knee down a little closer towards your wrist same thing. Change sides, put the left forearm down, take your left knee, or did I take my right knee? Is that the right knee? Might have been the right knee. Take your knee way up towards your elbow crease and start to move it, massage it into your elbow crease. It was your right knee, so sorry about that. It's the right knee in there. Massage, roll back and forth, roll side to side, move in circles, and then move a little closer towards the hand 
and release that. Come on to the hands and the knees. Now turn your triceps like we were practicing. Roll the tricep towards each other, same action at the wall. And as you press into the hands evenly, come into downward facing dog. As you hold in down dog, press the hands evenly like at the wall, turn the triceps, and now without your hips or your ribs twisting, lift your right leg up from the inner thigh. Lower the right leg back down, and now lift the left leg up from the inner thigh. So practice that turn in your shoulders, try not to lose it. Lower the left leg back down. Now we're going to see if you can hold that in an upside down position with all the weight of the body up on the arms. So you're going to step close to the wall. And you're going to try to walk up the wall and make your body look like it's a 90 degree angle. So as you're doing this, really important that you keep the rotation of the arms like we were practicing with the hand at the wall. So rotate the arms, but then notice how your ribs want to push out. So draw the ribs back into the body. Keeping the ribs in, now see if you can lift one leg up without the hips or the ribs twisting. Then lower that leg back down and see if you can lift the other leg up without the ribs or the hips twisting. Keep lifting out of the wrists. Lower that leg back down. Then one leg at a time, step down and fold forward. Uttanasana, standing forward fold. Bring the hands to the hips, come up to stand, and step at the front of your mat. Stand in Tadasana, mountain pose. So turn your thighs as if you were holding the block, rotate the inner thighs back, roll the shoulders back, turn the arms, externally rotate like we were practicing with the hand at the wall, then raise the arms up and overhead, inhale. As you exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, stretch your chest forward. Exhale, step your left leg back into a lunge, lower the left knee, and raise your arms up. Inhale, low lunge. Exhale, bring the hands back down, curl the back toes under, lift the back knee. Then plant the hands and step back into plank pose. Set your knees down, shift forward, lower to Chaturanga. Lie on your belly, flip your toes back, Inhale into low cobra. Adjust the thighs as if they're holding the block again. Hug in without hardening the groins and lift the shoulder heads. Lower back down. Push up onto your hands and your knees. Glide back to downward facing dog. From down dog, lift your right leg up from the inner thigh. Then step your right foot all the way up in between your hands. Lower the left knee. Inhale the arms up, low lunge. Exhale, bring your hands back down. Curl the back toes under. Step your back leg forward without the hips twisting. Inhale, flat back. Come all the way up to stand, raise your arms up. Exhale, arms to your side, samastiti. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, lengthen. This time, step the right leg back. Lower the right knee down. Inhale, low lunge, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring the hands back down to the mat, curl the back toes under and lift the back knee. Left hip in, lengthen, plant the hands, step back to plank pose. Set your knees down, shift forward, lower to chaturanga, keeping your navel in, lower to your belly, inhale, low cobra. Elbows are in, arms are externally rotating, same rotation we were practicing. Lower back down, push up onto your hands and your knees, glide back to downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up without the hips twisting. Pull your knee up into your chest and step your left foot all the way up to your left thumb. Lower your back knee. Inhale, low lunge. Raise the arms up. Bring the fingertips back down. Lift the back knee up. Without your hips twisting, step your right leg forward. Fold forward. Press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Raise your arms up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Samastiti. As you stand in Tadasana Samastiti, Adjust your hips back over your ankles and your shoulders over your hips. Inhale the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to plank. This time, knees down or not, lower slow to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
rotate the upper arm bones, turn the triceps towards each other, lift the chest, glide back to downward facing dog. As you hold in down dog, come back to your steady breath. Slow down your breath. Breathe in and out through your nose. Step your feet forward, one leg at a time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. Raise your arms up. Exhale, samastiti. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to plank pose. Lower slowly to chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Thighs rotate as if they're holding the block. Toes stretch. Exhale, downward facing dog. Hold steady in down dog. When you sink back in down dog, when you're trying to stretch back, Try not to lose the rotation of the arms that we practice with the hand at the wall. Keep your ribs in. The more you move your thighs back and stretch your hips back, the more your ribs are going to want to sink. Draw your ribs back into your body. Step your feet to the front of your mat. Inhale, lengthen, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward. Root down into your feet. Come all the way up. Raise your arms up and overhead. Inhale. Exhale, release your arms to your side. Inhale, arms go up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step or hop back lightly, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. As you hold in this down dog, uh, glide forward to plank now. Lift your right leg, knee up into your chest. Pull the knee up into your chest and round, and then inhale, one-legged plank. Exhale, pull your knee up and round. Inhale, flat back, stretch the right leg back. Exhale, pull your knee up and round. Hold, step your right foot all the way up to your right thumb, wiggle it up so it aligns. Squeeze your right hip back in. And as you inhale, float your arms back at your side. Roll your shoulder heads back. Inhale, come all the way up for crescent. Take your arms up. So as you hold in crescent, start to move your spine in like you did at the beginning of class, seated. From your upper spine, move in. Move the tailbone in. Bring the hands back down. Hands plant. Step back. Hold in plank. Lower to chaturanga, press straight back up to plank. From plank pose, lift your left knee up into your chest and round your back out. Inhale, flat back, straight leg stretches back. Exhale, pull your knee up and round out. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, pull your knee up, round it out. Step your foot all the way up close to your thumb. Squeeze your left hip back in. Float your arms back at your side. Turn the thumbs to face out. Lengthen. Push through your right big toe mound. Right leg strong. Left hip in. Inhale. Raise the arms up. Crescent lunge. So think of your back inner thigh lifting as you lift your pubic bone. Draw it in and up. Then start to lunge a bit deeper into the front of your left heel. Bring your hands back down. Step back to plank. Lower slow chaturanga. Press straight back up, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, step or jump forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sit back into chair pose. Sit your butt back low and take your arms out in front of you. Feel the weight back in the heels. Now raise the arms all the way up, but try not to let your top chest sink. Press down, stand, drop your arms to your side. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, Ardha. Step or jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog.
Warrior one, step your right foot, just one breath, turn your back heel down, inhale, arms come up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Hold in down dog, steady your breath. So instead of taking shallow breaths in down dog, think of your breath moving all the way down to the bottom of your lungs. Bend your knees, jump to the front of your mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Bend your knees, sit back. Press up to stand, samastiti. Inhale into chair. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Step or float back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Warrior one, step your right foot. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, arms come up, reach. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing. Exhale, down dog. Hold in down dog. Just a reminder, turn the thighs as if they're holding the block from the beginning of class. Hug in with the outer hips, but spin the groins, release them back at the same time. Bend your knees, jump or step forward. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose, utkatasana. Bend knees, sit back. Press up to stand, samastiti. Inhale, arms go up. Now sit back into your chair. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Down Dog. Step your right foot for Warrior Two. Warrior One, inhale, arms up. Exhale, Chaturanga. Last B salutation, inhale, Upward Facing Dog. Exhale, Down Dog. Step your left foot, warrior one. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. As you hold in down dog, again, find a steady quality of the breath. Slow down the breath. Now step your right foot in the middle of your hands, come up into warrior two, spin the back heel down, open up. So make sure that your feet are lined up about heel to arch, back foot's angled in a bit. Make your right knee point straight ahead. So think less about how deep you're gonna sink today and think more about lifting up through the inner seam of your back leg and pulling up tall through the crown of your head. So the spine feels long. All those points in the spine that we focused on Avoid sinking into those points. Instead, draw the energy in and up. Then place your right hand on the outside of your foot, on the floor or on the block. Take your left arm all the way overhead. Make a long line from your back heel all the way past your fingertips. Glance at your right knee and make sure it's not caving in. Spin your right thigh out so that your knee starts to press back up against your right arm. Stretch the inner right leg towards the knee Squeeze the outer right hip in, and at the same time, release the groins away from each other. Feel the outer hips engage, the tailbone move in. As the groins spread, draw the navel in and up. Take your left arm back up. Press down. Inhale, arms up. 
Exhale, circle your hands to the mat, step back, move through vinyasa or press straight back to downward facing dog. Step your left foot in between your hands, come up into warrior two. So make sure that the feet are aligned about heel to arch. Your back foot should be angled in just a bit and your left knee points straight out over your left second toe. Spin the thigh out so that the second toe, ankle, knee, and center left hip all line up. Lift up through your middle. And as you press the outer edge of your back heel, think of lifting through the inner arch all the way up through the hip socket, all the way up through the top of your head. Then see if you can bend a little bit deeper into the front of the left heel. Reach out over your left leg, place your left hand down on the outside of the foot, on the block or on the floor. Take your right arm all the way overhead. So for today's class, it would benefit you to have the hand flat on the block, whether it's on the tall or medium height, so that you could work that same action that we were working at the wall with the rotation of the upper arm bone, the press of the hand, and the length through the collarbone and the back of the shoulder blade, uh, top of the shoulder blade that is. Keep your back outer heel anchored and try to find a long line of energy from your back heel past your right fingertips. Take your right arm back up, press down through your feet and come back to warrior two. Now straighten the left leg, turn the left toes in and interlace the hands behind the back. If you have, a tight, if you have tight shoulders, just use a strap or a towel instead with the hands shoulder width apart. Fold forward in between your legs. Keep pressing evenly through your feet as you lift through your arches, groins release back, and away from each other as the outer hips pin in. Pretend like you're trying to squeeze the tops of your thighs in. But at the same time, it's very subtle, can you feel your groins release away from each other? Set your fingertips down, inhale, create a flat back. Hold here, then exhale, take all the length, walk your hands back, release your head down to the floor. If your head doesn't touch, no worries, just let it start to hang. If your head touches and you can hug your elbows in, turn your triceps and lift your shoulder blades, you might float up and balance on your head like this. Keep the shoulder blades lifted, crown of the head is down, legs come all the way up. If you're not sure how to find the crown of your head, that's in the headstand video. Spread your legs wide apart. Now slowly lower the legs all the way back down if you're upside down. Then everybody, or watching at home, inhale flat back. Exhale, hands on your hips. Press down into your feet and come back up to stand. Good, now have your block handy close to the outside of your right heel. Turn your left toes in a bit, turn the right leg all the way out. Reach out over your right leg for triangle pose. <clears throat> so I've placed my hand flat on that block. You might not be able to do it on the lower height. You might have to use the tall height. It's most important that your chest is open. So if you put your hand flat on the floor and you're all rounded and your chest is closed, that's not so good for your body. So keeping the chest open, choose an appropriate height. Work on stretching your right inner foot into the floor as you spin your right inner thigh out, just like what you were doing in the last poses. Now put your left arm behind your back Roll your left shoulder back, keeping the shoulder back, bend your knee, take your block a foot in front of your foot, and lift your back leg up from the inner thigh. Put just a little bend in your right knee so you can turn the thigh out and squeeze your right hip in right over your ankle. You could look down and get a visual, where's your right hip? Squeeze it in. Now lift the back leg up higher, roll the left shoulder, open your chest, but don't forget about your tailbone. Move the tailbone in, navel in and up, now maybe take the left arm up if you're steady. Bend your right leg halfway. Take a big step back into triangle. Open up fully in your triangle. Send the block to the other side and then come back up. Turn your legs to the other side. Turn the right leg in slightly. Turn the left leg all the way out. Reach out over your straight left leg and place the left hand on the block. With the hand flat, work the same actions that you did when your hand was at the wall. As your left thigh turns out, squeeze your left hip in, move your tailbone in, and release the root of your right thigh back as you open your chest. 
Make sure all four corners of your feet are evenly rooting into the floor as you lift through the arches, up through the legs, up into the hip sockets. Connect the four corners of your feet again. Then take your right arm behind your back, internally rotate, wrap it, and feel where your left hip is. Can you hug it all the way in so it's in the line of the ankle? Keep your right shoulder rolled open as you bend your knee, step up to balance, half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Press evenly into the left foot so that you use the proper muscles in your left leg. And as you turn your left thigh out, hug your left hip in over your ankle. Now move your tail in, open your chest, and drive through your back heel. Take your right arm up if you're steady. Bend the left knee deeply. Take a big step back in a triangle pose. Press down through your feet. Come back up to stand. Turn your left to, uh, step to the front of your mat. Samastiti. Take a moment here. Then bring your hands into reverse prayer. Oh no, actually, just take your right arm uh, behind your back from under. Take the left arm from above. Bend the elbow and interlace the fingers. So we'll take Gomukhasana arms. So my shoulder's a little too tight to interlace the fingers. I'm gonna grab my shirt instead. And you can see my ribs are starting to push out. So as I hold the shirt, I actually wanna draw the ribs back in. Then change the clasp. So now take the left arm from under and the right elbow from above. Draw the ribs in as you hold the hands. Now lift the left leg from the inner thigh and tip yourself forward. So you're balancing on your right leg, but try to keep your hips as even as possible. So it's the same work that we started with when you're holding the block and trying to hug the legs and then not letting the hip ribs and hips twist as you lift one leg and the other like we did in down dog at the beginning. Now pretend like there's a string from your left inner heel to your right elbow, pull the string long. Lift up your belly, slowly come up to stand without letting the left foot touch the floor and reach the left leg straight out in front of you. Take your arms up. Now bend the knee, cross the left leg up and over the right, and cross the left elbow under. Eagle pose. Adduct your thighs, so squeeze the thighs in, draw the navel in and up, and as your shoulder blades spread, lift your sternum and take the elbows forward and up. Uncross your arms and your legs and stand in Tadasana. Take the right arm from above, left arm from under, and bind the fingers or grab a hold of your shirt like I'm doing. Draw the ribs back into the body so they're not projecting forward. Then change. So now left elbow up, right arm from under. Hold the shirt, draw the navel in. Now on your left foot, take your right leg back behind you. As your right leg is going back, try not to let your hips open to the right. Keep the hip bones, the ribs even to the floor. Keep your left hip hugged in right over top of your ankle. Drive through your back heel. Try to make a straight line from your back heel past your left elbow. And imagine there's a string tied, pull it tight. Slowly come up to stand without letting your left foot, uh, right foot touch the floor, reach the right leg straight out in front of you. Stand up tall, take the arms up and overhead. Keep the left thigh back as the right leg starts to lift up higher. Then bend the left leg, wrap the right leg over, cross the right elbow under. Focus on your breath again. Keep pressing evenly into your left foot. Continue to hug the thighs in. Feel your middle turn on when you do that. And as the elbows go forward and up, try not to let your neck grip up. 
Uncross your arms and your legs and stand tall in Tadasana. Inhale, arms go up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back, lengthen. Step or jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. From down dog, step your right foot, crescent. Inhale, arms come up, back heel stays up. Bring your hands to your heart, lean your chest out over your right knee. Now twist to your right, take your left elbow to the outside of your knee. So as you're twisting, think of lengthening through the midline. Push your left big toe mound down, lift your back thigh, lengthen straight out through your crown. Then see if you can lunge a little bit deeper. Now put your block a foot in front of your foot on the inside, right hand on your hip, step up to balance, twisted half moon. Right hip hugs in over the ankle, left leg lifts up. Lengthen through your midline as you twist. If you can put your left hand flat, it can continue to do the same work at the wall so the chest starts to open up even in a pose like this. Somebody asked me, how do you get your chest open in yoga? Well, every single standing pose is an opportunity to work your chest open based on how you work your arms, and your chest. So see how open the chest is in this posture. Work so you can get your chest open. If you can't, you just put your left hand higher. The block goes higher, you might have to modify. From here, bring your left knee to the outside of your right heel and sit down. Ardhamatsi Andrasana, twist to your uh, right with your left elbow hooked to the outside of your knee. Now stay here, just working on your upright twist or Coming into an arm balance, hook the knee way up high towards the armpit. Put the hands shoulder width apart down on the mat or on the floor. Hug the elbows in like chaturanga and then lean into your chaturanga elbow. Then see if you can straighten the legs out maybe. Keep the collarbones broad, hug in at the back of your armpits. Good, lower the legs back down, Ardha Masyandrasana. Come back to center, put your hands down, step or jump back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. From down dog, step your left foot, crescent. Inhale, come on up, raise the arms up. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart, lean your chest out over your knee. Back leg stays strong as you twist. So try not to give up the back leg, push the big toe mound, lift the back inner thigh, Lengthen straight out to the line of your back inner heel with your head. Notice if you're starting to round in your upper back. That's where most people round when they twist. Instead, lengthen through your mid and upper spine. Then see if you can get more rotation there. Put your left hand on your hip. Put your right hand a foot in front of your foot on the inside on the block. And then lift the back leg up from the inner thigh. Feel your left hip stay hugged in over the ankle. Then take the left arm up if you're steady. Open up across your chest the same way you stretched your arms at the beginning of class. Rotate the triceps, broaden the collarbones, lengthen through the tops of the blades, back of the neck. Now lower your knee to the outside of your left heel, right knee to the outside of your left heel. Sit down and hook your right elbow on the outside of your knee. Same work here as you sit. Try not to sink back like we worked at the beginning of class. Move the lower back in, lift from the back of the spine. <clears throat> then I'm going to show a little bit better angle here. Hook the knee into that top of the armpit, back of the armpit, and see if you can lean into your chaturanga arms. If you can, you might be able to straighten your legs. Then jump or step back, chaturanga. Inhale to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. From down dog, last standing vinyasa, step your right foot up to your right thumb, back foot a little bit closer, straighten the leg, roll yourself up to stand, then bring your hands into reverse prayer. Or if that's too difficult for your wrists, the wrists are too tight, then put your knuckles together behind your back. But we did a lot of wrist stuff, so they might be open enough. Fold forward all the way out over your right leg. Keep your back heel rooted, keep your right hip squeezed in. Press down even into the right foot.
then press down into your feet, inhale, come all the way up, right hand on your hip, raise the left arm up and overhead, inhale, exhale, fold forward halfway. Set the left hand down on the block or on the floor, on the outside of your foot, lengthen through your midline, turn your chest, and take your right arm up. Same way we work the chest open. Use the arms, use the stretch, Then bring the right hand back down. Step up into standing splits. Lift the back leg up from the inner thigh. Press evenly into your right foot. Pull from your right ankle up into your hip socket. And as you hug in with your inner thighs a bit, lift the left leg up higher. Lower the left leg to meet the right. Fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back. Hold as you sit back, chair pose, Utkatasana. Raise the arms up. Bring your hands to prayer. Lean your chest out over your knees and twist to your right. Take your left elbow to the outside of your knee. You can hold here in your chair twist. Think about moving into the ankles and heels more. Or you could hook the knee up higher into your armpit, lean forward, and balance and side crow. If you're balancing in side crow, set the feet back down, and everybody come into chair pose. Press up to stand, Samastiti. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Step back to plank. Press straight back to downward facing dog. Step your left foot. Step your back foot a little bit closer and straighten the left leg. Roll yourself up to stand. Bring your hands into reverse prayer. Or press your knuckles together in your upper back. Inhale, lift your chest, and exhale, fold out over your left leg. Keep your left hip hugged in. Keep the left foot evenly rooted. As you fold forward, make sure that your left hip stays in the line of your left ankle, not swinging out to the side. Then press down into your feet. Inhale, come back up. Place the left hand on the hip and raise the right arm up and overhead. Inhale. Exhale. Fold forward halfway. Put your hand down on the block on the outside of your foot. <clears throat> then lengthen as you twist. Take the left arm up to the ceiling. Keep a firm press in the four corners of your feet. Keep lifting energy up to your legs to help lengthen your spine. And remember, there's the tendency to round in that upper back, so lengthen through there as you twist. Bring your hands down, step up to balance on your left leg, standing splits. Lower your right leg to meet your left. Inhale, flat back. And as you exhale, sit back, chair pose. Bring your hands to your heart, lean your chest out over your knees, and twist to your left. Take your right elbow to the outside of your knee. Draw your right hip back and in so your knees line up, and lengthen straight out in between your knees with your head. Stay there in your twist, or squat down and come into side crow. Hook your left knee way up on your right arm. Try not to let your left butt sit onto your left arm. Lower your feet back down, back into chair pose. Then press up to stand up. Inhale, take your arms up and overhead. Sit back in a chair. From this chair, sit your buttock all the way to the floor 
and come into boat pose, Navasana. <clears throat> As you hold in boat, move the spine in and maybe straighten the legs as long as you're not sinking back. Then round your sacrum into the mat, draw your belly in, knees are bent still. See if you can start to straighten the legs without your belly lifting up. Hug your belly in, hug your side ribs in and down. Take the right leg straight up and bring your hands up and over to the outside of the leg. Then change sides, hands up and over to the outside of the left leg. Keep the top chest broad, neck long. Then back to center, both legs forward as straight as they can go. Then take the legs straight up, lower your head down, place the hands at your side. Lower the left leg slowly without the hip bones twisting. Then scissor the legs, change in midair. Move really slow so you're not using momentum, you're using your muscles. Again, change legs in midair. Keep going as slow as you're seeing on the video. Keep both shoulders down and prevent your ribs and your hips from twisting. Now see if you can take your arms all the way up overhead, turn the hands like handstand hands and put the fingertips down. If your back ribs lift up, maybe not touch the fingertips down. Keep moving the legs, slow and controlled. Keep your belly in. Don't let your lower back lift as the legs change. Lengthen your tailbone away from your lower back and lengthen through the back of your skull. Bring the hands back at the side. Lower both legs a third of the way. Another two inches. Another three inches. And hold. Then see if you can lower a few more. Bring the legs straight back up. Lower the legs a third of the way. Lower the legs another third of the way. See how low you can go before your belly lifts up. Bring the legs straight back up. Then bend your knees and lift up. Twist to your right knee and send your left leg forward. Inhale to center. Exhale to your left. Right leg goes forward. Inhale to center. Twist to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale to your left. Inhale to center. Exhale to the right. Inhale to center, exhale to your left. Inhale to center, exhale to the right. Inhale to center, exhale to the left. Come back to center, rock up into boat pose. Cross your legs, see if you can pick up and jump back to chaturanga. Is it working that one maybe? Press up to plank. Good, downward facing dog. Finally, ab work is over. Maybe we'll do one more thing. Shift into plank pose, then come into plank on your forearms. So feel that burn that you feel in your abs. I want you to keep your abs turned on and your legs strong. Now squeeze the legs and the glutes. Hold here in plank. Keep lifting your belly. Now angle the left hand in a bit, roll to the outer edge of the left foot and take your right arm up. So you're not working that full external rotation like we normally do because it could be a little bit much on your shoulder in this pose. Come back into plank on your forearms. Hey guys, out of the way. Roll into the outer edge of your right foot, take your left arm up. So make sure that you turn that right arm in a little bit. Stack the hips as best as you can, push through the feet, head back in the line of the spine. Come back into plank on your forearms, hold there. Wiggle the hands out again so they're wide and walk into down dog on your forearms. Elbows are in under the shoulders, hands are shoulder distance apart as best as they could be. Lift up your buttock, buttock bones lift up for the ceiling, ribs tip back in, lift the right leg up without the hips twisting. Maybe you could balance if you like to balance. Otherwise, lower the right leg and lift the left leg. Hold there. Lower the leg back down. Set the knees down. And sit back into child's pose. Well-deserved child's pose. Good job. Way to stay with it.
Now come up onto your hands and your knees. So we're going to sit in Virasana. The knees go close together. The feet go wide enough for the butt to fit in between. I have a bad knee, so I sit on a block, like always when I do this. Otherwise, my knee will hurt. And now I want you to interlace your hands. Turn your palms to face up. Urdhva Badanguliasana, upward bound fingers posture. So you can see how my ribs are tipping up. I'm not doing a very good job today. Keep the ribs tipped in as you raise the arms. Bring the arms back down, change the interlock, take your arms up again. You can see from the stripes, oh, the stripes tell all. Tip the stripes back in. Make your stripes more horizontal so they're not lifting up. Then see how much you can stretch your arms. I got the tight shoulders. Bring your arms back down. Then uh, you might have to adjust the block if you're sitting on one. Walk your hands back about a foot. As you walk your hands back, Roll your shoulders back, lift your chest up. Press your shins down. And now as the groins release down, your inner upper thighs, lift your tailbone, move your tailbone in and lift your uh, buttock up away from the floor without narrowing the chest. Keep rolling the chest open. Press into the index finger knuckle. Externally rotate the upper arms like we've been practicing. As the tailbone moves in, draw your navel in and up and lift your sternum, chest bone. Lower your butt back down. So you can practice that pose one more time. If you want to try one that's a little more advanced, I'm going to show camel pose. So fingers on the top buttock. Now hug in with your outer ankles and your outer thighs. Start to roll the chest open. Same tailbone action, inner thighs back, tailbone in. Roll the chest open. Keep rolling the chest open, shoulders back. Keep rolling up and back. And think of the back of the head and the tailbone lengthening as far away from each other as you roll the chest open and maybe set the hands down onto the heels. Don't just sink into your hinge spot in your back. We all have a hinge spot that we can bend really deep into. I have a really bad one and if I keep bending into it, my back will hurt so bad. So don't hinge. Lengthen as you go into the back bend. Put your hands on your butt, come back up, and sit back on your block. Sit for a moment, breathe steady. Then come off the block and lie on your belly. Shalabhasana, back strength inner pose. Inhale, come on up. So as you come up, press the pinky toes down, spin the inner knees up. Now lift the legs up, keeping the turn of the inner knees. Spin them up to the ceiling. Hug your outer hips, lift your belly, and lift your shoulder heads. Stretch past your fingers and reach your chest forward. Then put the hands at your side, roll into upward facing dog, deepest up dog of the day. Stretch. Glide back to downward facing dog. Spread the fingers, spread the toes. Improve your roots as you stretch along. Come back to a steady, even flow of the breath. Then bring your right leg in for single leg pigeon. So set the shin down close to your wrist. The knee is towards the outside of the right wrist. And to increase the stretch, you might scoot your right foot forward more. Then we're just going to work on the upright variation where you're turning your outer left thigh down and then walk your hands over towards your right knee a bit so your chest starts to aim a little more towards your right knee. If you're feeling this really bad in your knee, I want you to back off. It's not a knee stretch, it's a hip stretch. So you might have to just lie on your back and do ankle to knee pose instead. Otherwise, walk your hands back to center, step back to down dog, then bring the left leg in for single leg pigeon. So I set the knee down. Um, angle to the outside of the left wrist. I scoot the right foot close to the right wrist. And then I start to walk the hands towards the left knee, angle the chest towards your left knee. Roll your outer right thigh down towards the floor, just like you would for up dog. Lift up out of your lower back as you open your chest. Now sit over onto your left hip and turn to the side for Upavishta Kanasana. Legs wide apart pose. Sit with your legs wide apart and turn your 10 toes to point up to the ceiling. Sit up as tall as you can. Now bend the left knee and bring the left heel in close to your pubic bone. Turn your chest to face your left knee. Slide your right hand along your right inner leg, palm facing up. Raise the left arm up and side bend out over your right leg. So as you're reaching, think of stretching your left buttock bone into the floor and then stretch through your inner left leg away from you. 
So it's like you're trying to abduct your thigh. You're stretching the leg away from you with that left leg. As you inhale, come back up. Release the left leg. Take it wide apart again. Then grab a hold of the inside of your right knee. Bend the knee and bring the heel in close towards your pubic bone. Turn your chest to face your knee. Open up. Put your left hand on the inside of your left leg. And now stretch your right hand all the way up and over. Reach towards your foot. So you're reaching with your left hand to your inner foot with your right hand towards your outer foot. Keep the right inner buttock bone rooting to the floor. Keep the right inner knee lengthened away from you like you're trying to abduct your thigh. Stretch it away from you. Open it up. Stretch the knee towards the floor. All the while breathing evenly to open up your right side armpit chest. Come back up now. And now we're going to do kind of a funky stretch that you probably have never seen before. So I'll try to explain with the words. The right knee goes out to the side at an angle with the hip, and you're making a 90 degree angle with your right knee where the foot is placed. Then your left leg angles out to the side. I'll move the block so you can see. And you're making a 90 degree angle with the left leg as well. In between your two legs is another 90 degree angle. I'm showing with my hands now. Right leg, 90 degree angle. And you're lengthening the right knee away from you. So now with your hands, lift yourself up and try to sit more on your right buttock bone. It won't, you won't be able to. You'll be on the left butt bone, but the effort is to try to sit the right butt bone down first and stretch the right knee away from you. Then release that and change sides. Left knee goes out to the side in line with the hip. This is really get your proposed to spend time in. So if you have time to pause the video and work on this stretch longer, this is a great stretch that we don't get this dimension of movement usually. Push your hands down, lift up, and try to sit more onto your left buttock bone, both legs at that 90 degree angle. Now, as you stretch the left buttock bone into the floor, think of stretching your inner right buttock bone away from your left knee as you stretch out through your left knee and drive through your left heel like you're pushing it into a wall. Both feet are flexed. Now pull up and sit tall through your spine. Turn your left outer thigh forward and turn your chest more towards your right knee as the outer thigh turns. It should be from the turn of that thigh that you're turning your belly chest towards your right knee. Keep on working on stretching the left buttock bone towards the floor. Now slowly release, lean towards the right hip, release the legs, and come into Dandasana. Sit with the legs, stretch straight out in front of you, sit tall, raise your arms up, then reach for your feet. <clears throat> Hold here, come back to your breath, slow your breath down, and feel like the breath can take you deeper into the stretch. So less instructions now, now watch your breath move you deeper. Inhale, sit back up. And as you exhale, lie down onto your back for Shavasana Corpse Pose. Most important pose that you'll practice. Take the feet slightly wider than hip distance. Take the hands about a foot away from your body and turn the palms to face up. Let the physical body relax, especially your belly, your chest, your shoulders, your neck, and your throat. Feel like the body is being breathed now. See if for the next few minutes, you can just watch the breath. Final meditation. Thanks for watching. Namaste.